up YouTube, it's your boy Riku the best, better than the rest, aka the Dark Knight. You call me that you are good for today, coming at you with another Dragon Ball Legends tips and tricks video. It's gonna be like a tutorial type of thing for PvP only. Not talking about PvE or anything like that. This is strictly PvP and how to get better at it, basically. Social media is gonna be at the top of the screen. If you have any of those platforms, you know what to do. I'm not gonna talk about my merchandise because you guys already know. So the few things we're gonna be talking about is charge stop, top mailing, combo drop or delaying your combo or baiting, side stop, creating distance, patience, lol, strike arts, blast arts, priority and knowing your opponents, know your units, knowing your opponent's units. Those are pretty much gonna be like the category, so to speak, that I'm gonna cover in this video. Keep in mind, when doing a charge stop, you can only do with blast arts, you cannot do with strike arts, blast arts only. I guess there's some properties to where you're able to cancel out the blast art fast enough or faster than a strike art or something like that. I don't know why you can actually only do it with blast art, but basically after you do a blast art, you have to dash forward and charge key, but you have to do it fast enough so you'll be able to charge key fast enough. Like I said, you can only do it after after a blast art. You can still mix in strike arts within a combo and still do the charge stuff. However, when you use a strike art, you have to cancel that strike art out into a blast art and then you can do the charge stuff into a strike art. You can do the key blast, charge stuff, strike art, blast art, charge stuff, blast art, strike art, some type of order like that. It's just you have to do the blast art in order to do the charge stuff, and then you can mix in strike arts within the combo. Now, top melee is very important for creating distance. We're gonna talk about that later. But it also is very important for trying to get priority again. Basically, what I mean by priority is, you know, able to get the first attack off or, you know, whatever the situation may be. Make sure you're in favor. That's a little confusing. Let me just simplify it, I guess. It wasn't even complicated. Basically, even if you fail like a freaking blast art, as you can see in the clips, if I fail a blast art, the safest way to get out of that situation is not by continuously sidestepping. It's to melee. Whether they switch out, whether they have an art card they want to use, you're going to cancel that out because top melee is actually really really good it should be used pretty much every time you fell a blast art at long range or at mid range it, it's a real safe method of getting distance back to mid range and just figuring out what you want to do next dropping your combo delaying your combo baiting them to switch in is very, very important now in, in today's meta. You really need to learn how to bait in or drop your combo or de even delay your combo. Pretty much all summer things are the same thing. Basically, you really just have to know this to go to my last point to ignore in your opponent's unit. Depending on who they bring, if they have a unit like Super Vegeta, if they have a unit like Yellow God Vegeta, if they have a unit like Green Movie Broly, you know they can cover change and knock you back and have a chance to get priority that way. So just knowing that they have those type of units, even people like Ultimate Gohan and Perfect Cell, they have cover rescue. You can bypass all that by delaying your combo and you pretty much just have to, you have to time it correctly. You have to time it correctly. That's all it is, you know? So if you know and are aware of the units that they have, like Super Vegito, Ultimate Gohan, Perfect Cell, Green Broly. In those certain situations, it's very important to delay your combo so that way you can bypass their cover switch and their cover change, their cover rescue ability. You can feel free to do as much damage you can do and they will have exhausted all their switch ins. All right, now hear me out over on this. I had to re-record my video that I posted on Twitter a couple of weeks ago, but I'm gonna make this short and sweet, okay? Size stepping in a combo. Yes, it does decrease your damage. However, if you have a unit that has card draw speed, they can bypass that and they will accumulate enough cards in a combo to deal even more damage than strike attack, strike attack, strike attack, strike attack, as opposed to strike attack, side stop, strike attack, side stop, strike attack, side stop. The units with the card draw speed will draw cards. That's the whole point of side stepping is to stop the combo, you know, so you're able to draw a card, you know? Like I said, it's only for units with card draw speed. I don't know how it is for units without card draw speed. So there are plenty of units in the game with card draw speed. You have GT Goku, you have Yellow Movie Goku, you have Purple Broly, you have Mai, you have Purple 
Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, you have Super Saiyan Blue Goku, you have Buhan. There are so many units in the game with the card draw speed ability. Left side of the screen, no side step. Right side of the screen, side step with card draw speed. Doesn't matter if you have card draw speed level five, level a million. If you do not stop the combo, you won't draw that card. It'll just be sitting there waiting. Side stepping is nerf. However, card draw speed units will still do more damage than an actual strike spam combo because by them side stepping, they will draw a card faster with the card draw speed. Tackling is a perfect way to creating distance from mid range to long range. Now, however, you can tackle at the end of your combo. I find that to be best in an, you know, in any given situation. Basically, after a key blast, you really just only have to double tap the screen after a key blast. You don't have to cancel anything out. Just double tap it because normally key blast will put you in mid range anyway and that is the only rage you can use the tackle strike arts is going to be a little bit complicated because at the end of the combo you will have to dash up cancel out your dash forward with the key charge only key charge for a second and then you'll tackle that you have to practice of course like i said with the strike arts at the end of that combo you have to dash up a little bit because strike arts unfortunately will knock them back to long range if i'm not mistaken so after strike art, dash forward, hold down the screen, key charge just a tad bit so it can still link up and then you'll be able to tackle and put them at long range. Now, this really depends on certain matchups and different types of people that you play. You will experience that more as you play PVP. But you know, I feel like sometimes being patient can actually lead you to a better result in the end. A lot of times, like I said, it really depends on who you're fighting. Being patient, you know, just being, you know, in a calm state, try not to rush it out, try not to be Rambo, just sit there with the character if need be. You know, if they're, especially if they're sidestepping nonstop, sidestep, sidestep, just sit there, try to figure them out, try to download them, the actual term, you know, just reset your mind, reset your brain and try to figure out, you know, different alternatives or whatnot if something is not working, but taking a breather always helps. Strike arts and blast arts. Now, I don't know, it's weird, I feel like, Blast Arts are now easier to be canceled out of than Strike Arts because, you know, Strike Arts can't be canceled out of until you get to mid range. Blast Arts can be canceled out close range, mid range, long range. Strike Arts, if you do a Strike Art mid range, you risk not a, uh, you risk a lot, bro. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna we're, we're gonna talk about priority, not in the sense of attacking first, but in the sense of what attacks have priority over others. Ultimate attack, hear me out. Ultimate attacks, physical super art cards, ultimate attacks, and quirk skills, the ones that you have to dash up and get like meta coolers. Any quirk skill like meta coolers, for all three of those cards, if you use them before they use the rising rush, only at close range you will get priority. As you can see in the video, ultimate art, physical strike super art, and a dash up initiation quirk skill will get priority 100% of the time over rising rush if you use the art card before they use rising rush if it's the other way around rising rush will have priority and rising rush will beat it out the only reason it beats rising rush is because you actually attack before during the startup of rising rush that's really the only reason why it gets priority over it at mid range at long range ultimate skill does not beat it out no strike super art does not beat it out no you have to use either of those three attacks at the startup of rising rush and you have to use it before they use rising rush so it's kind of you have to predict them pretty much you have to predict that they will use it fall for a bait use your ultimate skill when you know they're going to use their rising rush that type of situation however certain special arts or quirk skills can beat out rising rush at mid and full range perfect sales quirk skill beats out rising rush of course you really have the time you have to be careful with that final form freezer any paralyzing quirk skill beats out rising rush except frost frost you dash up with that quirk skill that only works like i said if it's a dash up quirk skill it has to be used only at close range and before they use their rising rush otherwise it's gonna get overtaken however any long range quirk skill will beat out rising rush or pretty much anything in the game my flash bang perfect sales quirk skill any quirk skills similar to those two will beat out rising rush but with those type of quirk skills it won't work at close range because sales quirk skill might be a little different than my quirk skill my quirk skill i believe still works up at close range even if you use it first so i think it's a little slower start up and i think even using that first while being at close range will still get beaten out by rising rush i think don't quote me but you really have to be careful and know the character's quirk skill ability is i really want to close out with this one right here knowing your opponent's units as well as knowing your own units know who to start off with 
know who to keep alive, know who is the Rise Rush target on your team, know who you want to Rise Rush on their team, obviously you do all that stuff on the setup screen and when you guys are picking units. Really know your team, know your team's cards, know your team's effects, all that good stuff. Make sure you know it well. Like I said, know who you want to start off with. If I'm using Lineage of Evil, Golden Freezer gets a ton of buffs early in the game starting off. So I will obviously start off with Golden Freezer or if it's not too safe for him, start off with somebody else. Make sure I get priority in comboing somebody, then switching Golden Freezer in mid combo. So that way I am safe or I am saving Golden Freezer from harm until I finish getting damage off of them. Basically, know the rise of rush, know what to do in what certain you know in certain situations and whatnot. And I put up that clip just because I kept his main ability because I know I would need a double dodge to avoid a rising rush or even take the bait purposely to dodge rising rush. That's what I mean by knowing your units, knowing their abilities, know know who is a late bloomer, pretty much get all their abilities late game, know who can survive a lot longer than what, you know, knowing which unit can survive, knowing which unit should survive. I know I probably missed a lot of points to touch up on, but like, I, I'm not perfect, no one's perfect, we're all human, so if I saw but I miss anything to cover, just let me know in the comment box below. That's that's all I really want to say, man. Shout out to my boy, Supreme Caramel. He pretty much showed me how to charge stuff and everything, told me how to do it and the whole process through it. My boy Techstar helped me out with the recording, some of the footage for this video so shout out to those two people and shout out to everyone just because i feel like giving a shout out that's gonna be it for this video and peace <laughs>